Hello YouTube, today we're back for another Nadi or Not video straight from that website. And I actually got confirmation today that the website is still up and running because there's a sale today of 30% discount on every book, which also tells me that the website must not be doing too hot. And that's great because considering the quality of the articles, I can only uh, guess about the quality of the books. So. Uh, today we're talking about an article that was written about grip, right? And mostly about mixed grip, straps or hook grip. Um, these are topics that I've developed already in some of my videos. Uh, but for the most part, I needed someone who thinks uh, in the complete opposite way as I do so that I can bounce my ideas by debunk debunking theirs. And this article is perfect because the gist of it is the author is telling you that you should only deadlift with a double overhand grip. So I'm going to go across the article and I'm going to explain why this mentality is counterproductive for gains, doesn't even make sense from a logical standpoint, and is usually served by poor arguments. And the title of the article should tell you the direction it's going to be taking because it is titled, Why Deadlifting with a Mixed Grip, Straps or a Hook Grip is for Egomaniacs and Cheaters. I explained before that the, the, the very notion of ego within the realm of bodybuilding or powerlifting is being misdiscussed and it's basically used to shame people. It's used to shame people into not doing things that uh, are considered wrong. And because the people who don't want to see these things don't have logical explanations, they rely on emotion. It's called affect. It's using the emotion of someone else to try and get them to do your biting, to try and get them to do what you want them to do. It's quite common nowadays, most of the time when you hear an argument, it's not based on logic or facts, it's based on feelings, and that's one of these. And he also mentions that it's for cheaters. What is cheating? I don't know. Many people seem to have a very strict code of conduct when it comes to lifting weights. Uh, I do when it comes to technique for injury prevention and tonnage direction, but as far as, as cheating goes, cheating is lifting. If you do a cheat curl, you're still doing a lift. It's just a cheat. There's a proper way to do it, but there is nothing wrong with cheating as long as it's fulfilling your goals. So they start by discussing something that I agree with, where they explain the fact that Powerlifting-centric thinking in YouTube has convinced people that you shouldn't use straps. And you've heard that before, there's no straps in the jungle, blah, blah, blah. Funnily enough, there's also no weight classes in the jungle, and yet powerlifting has weight classes. It's not an open class sport like sumo would be, which also should tell you that there's a lot of hypocrisy in that statement. And it's also discussed that a lot of the time, straps are sort of considered to be something that only bodybuilders use and it's, you know, it's supposed to be shameful because you're not really gripping the bar, which as he explains here, doesn't really make a difference because a hook grip is just like using straps. It's just that you're using your body as a hook. So the, the thing that secures the bar into position is part of, of your structure. But at the end of the day, you're doing the exact same thing. The mixed grip is a different beast. But basically, yeah, he's explaining the fact that a lot of people will tell you, oh, never deadlift with straps. And it can be sometimes even strong men who tell you that, but usually it's powerlifters. And when you try and push into the why, you never get a reason. You just get told, oh, just don't do it because it's not legit. Well, if you're not a powerlifter, who cares if it's legit or not? And even if you're a powerlifter, you can benefit from straps. And uh, the funny thing that they, they mention, so they start the article very strong. They sort of like... They, they lured me in. I was thinking, wow, maybe they're making sense today. They also talk about the fact that powerlifters suddenly lose all of their inhibitions towards straps when it comes to doing shrugs or rows. So it's, it's, it's not good for deadlift, but for the rest, when you can't grip the bar anymore, it's fine. Try and find the logic in that. And basically, as they explain is... The, the, the gist of it is people will tell you don't use straps because it gives you a weak grip. And they also say that you're going to become dependent on straps, which is funny coming from people who, for the most part, will not be able to hit the same numbers if you take away their belts or their knee sleeves. So it's sort of the same. We're all dependent on something. 
But at the end of the day, you're also dependent on the gym. If I take away your barbell, how are you going to lift? Right? You're dependent on the integrity of your body. If I take away your tendons, how are you going to lift? At some point, I get the logic that you don't want to have to always carry the entire house with you when you go to the gym. But come on, strap, you can just put them in your pocket. Or you can just have them around your wrist and look like a maniac on the street. So basically, the entire doctrine of powerlifting is you do double overhand, and when it gets too heavy, you either do a mix or a hook grip. And uh, that they're both okay. And at the end of the day, when you think about it, as they explain it, it's just because it's in the rules, right? It's because you are allowed to use those grips. That's why they're suddenly okay. Because as far as, far as uh, the actual grip strength required goes, of course you're going to use more grip strength for a mixed grip or I won't even say a hook because in reality I don't really think the hook is going to require that much more grip strength. But as far as the mixed grip goes, you're still doing something mechanically to the bar that makes it easier to grab. You're pushing on different sides of the bar so that it doesn't roll because what people don't get to the deadlift is a lot of the grip issue with the deadlift is as you get it up, the bar rolls and it's, it's prying your fingers open. If the bar didn't roll, for, for example, on the Smith machine, your grip would be much, much stronger. And that's what a mixed grip is doing. But all, to, all of that to say that these are the doctrine, this is the dogma that exists on YouTube Fitness and that was installed by powerlifting because for powerlifting it makes sense. But outside of the realm of competition, it doesn't. It, stop, it stops making any sense for hypertrophy. And a lot of people subscribe to this as it explains. And I was the same. I, I did mixed grip. I have a video about it in the injury prevention playlist. I did mixed grip for two years. I don't know why. Because I was not competing in powerlifting. I was not training for powerlifting. And yet I still did it. For what purpose? I mean, it didn't make my forearms grow any bigger. Uh, my grip strength was better, but for why? Why do you need grip strength? To deadlift? So you're deadlifting to deadlift. Think about that. Try and think about the things you do. Uh, now I've managed to get myself into a place of synergy where everything I do something, I'm thinking, why am I doing this like this? Is it synergistic? Am I fitting into specificity somewhere else in my training? And if the answer is no, I'm going to rethink what I'm doing. And you should be doing the same because you need everything to be aligned. After that, they say something that I don't necessarily agree with. They say that the mixed grip requires more hand and finger strength and the hook grip hurts. Uh, you know, I don't see why the mixed grip would require more finger strength. I, I would say that if what the hook grip does one thing outside of grip, it's finger strength because you need to keep the fingers in position. That's what's keeping the bar from just escaping. And all of that also feeds into the the, the idea that the author has, and that's where he loses me, that all of these methods are just for the ego, just to lift more weight. Well, those two are not uh, aligned. You can lift more weight and not be motivated by your ego. It just can be, you know, a pursuit that you have that you like to lift heavy. And they explain that, oh, it's just to post your PRs on Facebook so that you get likes. To me, that's projection. That's someone who does that, would like to do that, or cannot do that, and they resent people who do. It is true that there is a large portion of this entire social media thing that is entirely to feed our egos. That's true. I also think that if you use it properly, you can use it to, to share your knowledge and help people. That's mainly the reason why I do that. And then they explain also that um, they were questioning themselves and they were asking themselves, why can you lift more when you remove the grip factor? And that's a valid question. You should ask yourself that because in every single lift, there's going to be limiting factors because in every single lift, you use the structure and use the muscles. And there's always something that is going to prevent you from lifting more. And if you can pinpoint that thing, you can get a lot of work done because you can remove them from the equation. And that's what, why straps are so good. And then they explain that a, a, a reader sent them a message telling them that they deadlift only with double overhand grip to do damage control because you can only lift sub-maximal weights with this grip and the stress on the body is lower. And they, they, from that, they theorize that the grip acts as an injury prevention mechanism. 
that's a very interesting theory. I'm not going to argue against that. It's, it's interesting. Um, it's wrong, but it's interesting. See, the thing with grip and the thing with all of these, you know, the, these structural discussions around certain parts of the body, they're misguided in a sense. Because if you're able to bypass this uh, injury prevention mechanism and nothing happens, was it an injury prevention mechanism? You just proved it wasn't because you used a way to bypass it and, and you didn't die in a sense. And it's going to be true across the board because if such a thing existed in the human body, it would manifest itself. We have a lot of things in our body that are going to prevent us from doing stupid stuff. Uh, a lot of the time when we get sick, when we get in pain, it's not really that we damaged anything. It's the body telling us, okay, you're doing something here that I don't like. And if you keep doing that, we're going to get permanently damaged. So I'm going to give you a little taste of what you would feel if we kept doing that. And hopefully it's going to put some sense into your head. A lot of the time it's, it's benign, right? It's, it, it's this, this distinction between pain and injury that a lot of people don't get. I will make a video about that in the injury prevention place. But to get back to the topic of the grip, the issue with that logic of just doing double overhand is that one, based on the size of your hands, it's going to drastically change from individual to individual. Why? Because, and red pill of the red pills, grip strength has little to do with forearm strength and a lot to do with the, head, the size of your hand. Why? Because when you grip something, the more space you can get around the bar to cover your hand, the stronger your grip is. Which is why when you have long fingers, you're going to be able to grab that bar. And then as you wrap your thumb, you're going to be able to wrap a ton of the fingers around it. So it's not going to be a hook grip, it's going to be a regular double overhand like this. But for someone who's able to really get a lot of space around that bar, they're going to be much stronger. If you don't believe me, look at grip strength uh, competitions. Look at the guys who win. It's all guys with gigantic hands. And usually they have also a specific proportion to their hand where they, have, they don't have small palms, but in relation to their fingers, their palm is small. Uh, whether you believe in that or not, I think it's in Asian cultures, they, they give categories and names to the different type of hands you can have. And so you have earth hands, air, uh, water, fire. I wouldn't tell you exactly what each represent, but for example, I know that for me, I have what they call earth. And uh, so earth means that your palm is gigantic and you have tiny fingers and they're usually stubby. So if you look at my palm, not only is the palm longer than the fingers, it's also wider, meaning that if I took a finger and I tried to fit it here, it would be shorter than the palm. If you look at the other fingers too, I have very short thumbs and the pinky is also pretty average. So what does that do to my grip strength? Well, it, it makes it just pure garbage. Why? Because when I grab the bar, it's, I have a big palm, it's cool, but the palm is not gripping anything, the fingers are. And because the fingers are so short, they don't have much space to go around the bar. I love that to say what? I love that to say that for someone like me, if I were to follow that type of advice, I would be deadlifting around 330. And that is for one rep. So if I were to do multiple reps, I would be deadlifting sub 300 pounds. But actually right now my deadlift is in the 470 pounds. So that would be 170 pounds that I left on the table because my grip doesn't match my back strength and my posterior chain strength, which is also totally normal. Because if you think about it, think about the size of the muscles of the forearms compared to the size of the, of the muscles in the arm strings, glutes and back. Why would you let this limit the strength of all of the rest of the body? It's idiotic. And at the end of the day too, people don't think about it much. We don't do that with other lifts. When you do a back squat, you're doing the exact same thing. You're resting the bar on the structure. You're not holding the bar. How would you feel if, some, if someone told you, hey, what you're doing is cheating and uh, you need to actually hold the bar. So you can only squat when you hold the bar in an overhand position. How much would you be able to squat? Your squat would be cut in half if you're lucky. Most of the time you would lift one fourth of your squat. And why? 
at no point will you get injured using straps. People get injured doing their lifts, their lower back or their glutes or their hammies snap because they have poor form and they don't control volume and intensity. These are the reasons. There's no such thing as an injury prevention mechanism. It's a cool idea, but in practice, doesn't happen. It's been proven to just not happen. And even besides that, a lot of people will tell you that using straps can damage the... I've heard people say the arms, the, the, the shoulders, even the wrists. Nonsense. Look at strong men who deadlift a thousand pounds. When they get injured, first off, I haven't seen many strong men getting injured in their lower back, they're lifting. It's usually other events that uh, injure them. But even then, they use straps, they deadlift a thousand pounds. I've never seen a, a, a strong man a tear a forearm or a bicep or even hurt their wrist doing that. So all of that is based on just straight up lies. And also, if you think about it, if you let the grip lower the amount of stress on the body, what you're essentially doing is you're lowering the tonnage you give to the body, so you're going to make less gains. I explained it in the lower back video. Stress is not a bad thing. The, the, the amount of stress is going to define whether it's a good or bad thing. Then they sort of continue talking about that where they say maybe if you can't hold the weight you shouldn't lift it because you may drop it and damage the item or yourself. Well first off why would you care about damaging the item? It's a barbell, it's solid, and you're not going to break it. That guy sounds like the old grandmas that used to go to my old gym who were on the treadmills and they would walk the, the length of the gym to come tell me that I was doing too much noise on the deadlift and that I was damaging the floors. Who cares? It's not a library, it's a gym. Just Go, go away. And also the entire, if you can't hold it or if you can't put it down uh, you know, quietly, then you shouldn't lift it in the first place. These are rules that were invest, invented by the gyms because they don't want you to throw, they don't want you to chug the dumbbells away after your inclined press. That's it. It has no bearing on actual reality. If you can lift it, then you can lift it. Whether you can hold it or not, it doesn't matter. You can lift it. And if you apply that logic to other things, I mean, poles require you to grab onto the bar because of gravity. But what about something like, I don't know, people who are going to use a, a different type of grip on the bench, like a bulldog grip. You're gonna tell that guy, oh, you can't grab the bar normally, so don't bench. No, you find ways around it to optimize the lift. It's always the same. Same thing with what I said about the back squat. Some people cannot squat with a high bar, so they do a low bar squat. You're not going to tell them that it's bad just because they can't do it the style you like. You find ways to use the best amount of muscle in your body in the safest way possible. And then they go, they talk about the mixed grip, and I agree the mixed grip is not a good grip, you shouldn't be doing it, but... The way they go about it, they, they say that deadlifting with a mixed grip has always been the lowest IQ route to do things. I always resent that, that stupid red pill mindset of calling people low IQ. It doesn't represent intelligence. How, how, when will people realize that? Depending on the country and the culture you exist in, IQ tests are completely different. And there's other things. There's emotional intelligence. There's adaptability. All of these sort of exist within IQ, but it's not the end or be all. And every time I see someone use IQ as an argument to explain why they are so smart, I immediately assume they're idiots. And usually I'm on the mind because that guy is an idiot. So uh, the mixed grip also, like think about people like me. If I were to compete in powerlifting, a hook grip is not possible. My hands are, are bloated, the fingers are too short, I cannot hook grip. So if I were to need a grip to lift the weights and I couldn't use straps, I would have to mix grip. And a lot of people do, like look at Chris Duffin. Chris Duffin is an amazing powerlifter. He uses the mixed grip, he cannot hook grip. He has the same type of hands that I have. And then they explain that since everybody does the mixed grip, it means that it's stupid. I don't necessarily disagree with that logic. The mainstream is usually not the best, but it's mainstream for a reason. It's not that it's stupid, that it's easy. And a lot of people, they buy into the straps of the evil mentality, and so they do mixed grip. What they fail to realize is that no amount of mixed grip deadlifts gave them big forearms. So why did they not just use straps in the first place? That's what I realized too. I was like, okay, I've been mixed gripping for a while, it has done nothing for me. 
Uh, it's done some uh, nucleus overload for my left bicep, but that's it. So why am I doing this? Well, the answer was because I was being blinded by dogma. They explain also that the McDrip can lead to tearing a bicep, which it is. Don't let anyone tell you that the McDrip is not dangerous on the bicep. It is. And also, it's true, and he's talking about something I will talk about eventually. People will tell you, oh, if you keep the arm fully straightened, then there is no risk of tearing the bicep. It's true, but you will find that a lot of people, they don't even realize it. When the weight gets heavy and their grip is falling, they curl. Why? Because it puts the bar in a deeper position within the hook of the end and it makes it tougher to slip out, but that's when they tear a bicep. You even have high-level powerlifters who do it, right? And then, you know, they, they sort of discuss all of the, 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 the grips. I'm not going to talk about the strap one because they really don't go into length into that, but they talk about the hook grip and they say that the hook grip is strap lifting without straps, which I agree. And it's based on pain tolerance and also the length of your finger. Some people cannot do it. You know, and they explain the pain aspect of the hook grip and whatever, whether you want to believe that the hook grip is going to cause damage to the thumb in the long run or not, I'm just going to ask, why are you doing it? If you hook grip because you're going to do powerlifting or you're going to do weightlifting, then sure, because the rules force you to. But if you're a bodybuilder, if you're training for aesthetics, why? There's no point. Use straps. And then they sort of talk about the downsides, advantages of both sides, and I agree with all of them. That's the, that's the, the crazy part about this is we agree on the premises, but not on the conclusions. And that's something I've noticed a lot within this natural bodybuilding thing, where you can have the same beliefs as someone, but they don't result in the same reality. After that, they say something quite controversial, where they say that the, all of these grips should be removed from powerlifting and Olympic weightlifting since they are cheating method, with, which I, I explained, there's no, no such thing as cheating. Uh, the only cheating is going against the rules. That's what cheating is. If there were no rules, cheating wouldn't exist. Cheating is, it's, it's, a, it's a subjective notion that was invented by humans. It doesn't exist in nature. There's no such thing as cheating in nature. And they said it's a crutch, which shows that they don't understand anything. Because one, there's a reason why we can't just tell athletes to just use a double overhand because every single world record would regress by 50% and it would kill the sports. There's a, the reason why we need those grips. And then they sort of um, go into what I just uh, discussed, where they do a straw man and they quote someone that would be talking to them and trying to, you know, uh, counteract, counter their argument by saying, but bro, why would you want your grip to be the limiting factor in a pole designed to strengthen the glutes and back? And they, tell, they say you can still lift plenty of weight with this grip. If you can't, it's because you have a weak grip. Again, they completely misunderstand what grip is. It's mostly about the size of your hands. Another reason to train this way. And also keep that in mind. If you have, it, it's sort of a vicious circle because if you have small hands, your ability to develop a stronger grip is going to be damaged because you can't do much volume on it. So it's a cycle of people with big hands are going to be able to pick up more weight and uh, send more tonnage towards their forearm, get bigger forearms, which is going to allow their grip to grow. People with small hands are not going to be able to grip as much and they're going to not be able to get as much volume and therefore their forearms are not going to grow as much and they're going to be just limited in gains. Think about your hands, they're limiting factors too, right? They talk about that, but they don't push the logic uh, far enough. The grip is, the, is not the limiting factor. The hands are. Your hands are limiting how much your forearm can train and grow. That's the truth. A lot of the time when you train the forearms, what gives up is not the forearm. It's not the muscle of the forearm. It's the grip because they're not the same. There is too much of a misconception about that in the YouTube fitness. Your grip is not your forearm muscles. It's a different thing. Your grip is going to use some of that forearm muscle and the forearms to grow need the grip. Why? Because you grow the forearms through wrist flexions and isometric holds. So they have a relationship, but they're not uh, the same. They're not the same thing. They're entities and they're entities because they have a relationship. 
you can have a relationship with yourself. Saying that they are the same thing is like saying that ankle mobility is the same as the strength of your legs. It's not. They are different entities. One of them is structural and the other one is muscular. And after that, they talk about 10-30% that you can add by cheating, which they call cheating, which is a lot. When you think of in terms of tonnage, it's a lot. Sacrifice, if I sacrificed 30% of my tonnage, I would shrink. I would lose size because it represents a ton of poundage. And that's also, you know, the mentality of that guy, which is, uh, it, it's the cult of mediocrity. Being okay with deadlifting less, if your form and technique is good and you've never had any pain and you make good progress, and sacrificing all of that for the sake of not cheating, that's ego to me. He talks about ego a ton, but that's ego. Because it's wanting to be able to tell yourself, oh, I did it by myself. It's raw. But those are just definitions that you imposed upon yourself. No one forced you to do that. So you're killing your ability to grow for the sake of just you know, being uh, 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 righteous, I guess, which also explains why these people stay small forever, right? Because they will find any reason to justify not to lift heavy. And that's one of them, by the way. Then they, uh, they, they explained, you know, the, the entire history of their lifting, that they use hook grip and straps. And then they said that they eventually just started lifting weight that they can hold. Which, if it makes you happy inside, do it, but understand you're limiting yourself. And I'm going to quote this. They, they, ask, they ask themselves why they used to use all those grips to lift heavy, and they said, the only answer that comes to me is ego. All of the arguments are self-righteous rationalization, similar to the way people defend the low bar squat. An exercise that makes sense in only in a polyphonic context, a state of a very specific injury or in a sick head obsessed with booty activation. I think that sums it up. I think that someone who just cannot wrap their head around the fact that other people are different than they are, right? Because low bar for a lot of people, especially my tall and lanky dudes out there, is going to be a lifesaver because the issue with the high bar is that a lot of people are going to topple over because they cannot maintain thoracic extension due to their structure and therefore they're going to sabotage not only the quad activation but also the posterior chain activation. And by moving that bar down the back, they, they keep the bar over mid foot, they maintain a better torso angle, that's something people don't realize. When you high bar squat, there's going to be a shift in torso angle. But if it's dramatical, you need to, to switch, you need to try low bar because low bar is going to allow you to not shift forward as much into the descent because you're pre-shifted. And that makes a world of difference for lower back pain and muscle activation. But that is the state of mind that of someone who has developed resentment towards powerlifting and therefore is going to take anything that powerlifter does and say, it's bad. It's not. There's a use to it, right? And it's not just because they can lift more weight that way. A, a smart powerlifter, and usually the ones that make it for a long time and break records for 10 years or smart, they also pick things that you can repeat in uh, the long run. Meaning that they don't want to just break a record and then be destroyed. They're going to pick something that is going to prevent injury so that they can accumulate tonnage and get stronger within the realm of strength training. Of course, someone who's uh, weak and small will never understand that mindset. And they say, one day I just went to the gym and decided to stick to overhand grip, regardless of what happens. It felt way better than strapping or hooking. So that's a guy that showed up one day and said, you know what? I don't want to train intense anymore. I don't want to lift heavy anymore. It's too tiring. I'm going to find a way to lift only f like 60 or 70% of what I used to lift and call it a day. That's just lazy. It's just the best way to stay small forever. I don't get that mindset. I just cannot fathom why anyone would think that way. If you have a way to lift heavier and it's safe, do it. It's just, there's no excuse around it. That's the equivalent of someone who showed up one day to the gym and said, I can bench 300 for reps, but you know what? Let me go back to 200 because 300, there's too much of a risk, right? That's, that's stupid. I've explained that before. 
your risk of injury doesn't increase with intensity as much as people think. As long as the technique is good and you control volume and intensity through recovery, you'll be fine. Your body is not made of sugar. You can handle that. And they conclude by saying that the double overhand grip is the best way to deadlift. For everyone except dudes who compete in ego lifting, you will not gain extra muscular development by eliminating, eliminating the grip factor. Okay. And I will finish like with this because it's the conclusion. That person, the guy who writes for the nallyornot.com, is a disingenuous hypocrite and a, we a weasel. The reason why is they keep lying, they keep just stating nonsense, and they contradict themselves. That's the worst part. I don't have anything in pe against people who are stupid or wrong. I have something against people who lie. So he spent the entire article saying that, Yes, you would leave some pounds on the table for the double overhand, but at the end of the day, it's fine because it's better for long-term injury prevention. And in the conclusion, he reversed that. He does a 180 and he says, you will not gain extra muscular development by eliminating the grip factor. So basically, they knew that if they said that in the article, it would be too flagrant and people would say something and say, hey, that's wrong. So they just... They, they covered themselves up for the entire article and during the conclusion they revealed what they truly think. They truly think that if you can lift more weight by eliminating the grip, it has no result. It is statistically, mathematically, an impossibility of nature. It does not work like that. But I'm not surprised because that's someone who doesn't believe in training, they don't believe in the body's ability to adapt, and they're small, and that's why they're small. And they say that the only thing you get from that is worthless weight on the bar that increases the stress, the stress on the supportive structures. Which, surprise, if you don't use straps, the supportive structure is your hand. So there's already more stress on that. And the supportive structure is going to be perfectly fine as long as your technique is fine. Don't let this limit this. The sentence worthless weight on the bar. Weight on the bar is never worthless. As long as it reflects progression, it's going to reflect muscular gains. I'm just flabbergasted by that logic. I'm flabbergasted because I also know that a lot of people subscribe to it. And if you're on this channel and you're on the fence, you know what? I'm going to keep making videos about nallyornot.com because this is the mindset that will keep you weak and small for the rest of your life. And then you're going to end up like that, like that guy, which, may I remind you, was also the guy who stopped deadlifting because someone told them that bad form. So they, they hid like a wimpy little girl because someone told them that they had bad form. That's the same person that is now telling you to not deadlift heavy and to just do, use a double overhand. Do you want to take advice from that guy? The answer is no. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.